Hello everyone, this is Young5 and welcome to the Global Insightful Toy Review. And today is already looking at the 2011 release by Hasbro of the G.I. Joe celebrating the 30th anniversary action figure review. And today's action figure review we're looking at the Wave 3 of the G.I. Joe Renegades Scarlet, the undercover agent. Now I got this straight from eBay and this actually cost me about $10, which is alright of a price. Not too sure why the price is lower compared to the other figures, most probably because for Scarlet and the rest of the Wave 3 of the Renegades figures, the name characters like Ripcord, Tunnel Rat, not very well sought after if you compare to the other figures like the Cobra Trooper, Techno Viper and Storm Shadow, especially Storm Shadow. So for $10, this is actually not bad of a price. Despite that, it's a little bit pricier compared to the US retail pricing. Now, let's take a look at the front portion of the packaging itself. On one corner here, we have the Renegades artwork style of Scarlet. And the artwork style is actually not bad. It looks very nicely done. She has green eyes, very nice. Wearing this vest on her body and carrying the, I would say the crossbow weapon that she normally would use throughout the whole G.I. Joe well, era. Now inside the plastic bubble itself we have the Renegades figure Scarlet holding the crossbow itself and we have here a small little pulse pistol. Behind the figure is the base stat and what's great about this for the Wave 3 itself is that it does not include the Silly Pursuit of Cobra catalog. Very nice. Now at the back portion of the packaging itself, we have a full image of Scarlet here. The Renegade Scarlet, very nice. Here stated undercover agent. Here on one section here is the rest of the lineup for Wave 3. We have Ripcord from Renegades, Scarlet from Renegades of course, from this review as well. The Renegades Tunnel Rat, Renegades Duke, the 30th Anniversary Techno Viper, the Renegades Storm Shadow, Renegades Cobra Trooper, also known as the Cobra Security Trooper, the 30th Anniversary Iron Grenadier, and finally we have the Renegades Cobra Commander. Now at the bottom section of the card itself is the profile card for Scarlet. Yeah, you got a nice little G.I. Joe logo on one corner here. Code name Scarlet Undercover Agent. Name Shanna M. O'Hara. Here you got a nice little image of Scarlet here with a G.I. Joe stamp seal on the top. Now, on this section here, I'm going to bring it a bit closer. Great Lieutenant, Birthplace Atlanta, Georgia. Primary weapon, crossbow, combat gear, plasma pulse pistol. Now, at the bottom section here is the write-up stated Scarlet is an undercover agent who believes that Cobra is not the nice organization that it appears to be. She is smart and computer savvy, trained in martial arts and an ace shot with a high-tech crossbow. Her sleuthing into the truth about Cobra causes the events that led to the group becoming renegades. Very nice. One problem, if she's such a computer savvy, why does Hasbro does not include you know, a small little notepad or a laptop or anything for her since, well, according to the write-up and also in the animation that she's computer savvy. Just two accessory? Rather disappointing. So without further ado, let's open up this packaging so we can molest the figure. Be right back. And we're back after the ring of figure and the rest of the stuff out from the packaging. Now let's take a look at Scarlet's accessories here, starting off with the base stand. Uh, it comes with a nice little G.I. Joe base stand here that's based on the 25th anniversary style. Got a nice little G.I. Joe logo on the top with two pegs for the figure to stand on. Name plate there stated as Scarlet. At the back portion of the base stand, bottom section there stated at 2007 Hasbro made in China. Now Scarlet here comes with only two accessories which is very very minimal and rather disappointing actually for a G.I. Joe figure. Now it comes with a pulse pistol which is made of a black plastic material color and the details of the mold is, well first off the mold is of course nail and the details is not really that impressive. You got the handle, you got the trigger, you got the targeting sights on the top, 
and you got just tiny little bit of details at the back here and and the front but nothing really stands out it looks rather cheap actually if you look at how flat on this section is actually how flat the entire well surface of the pistol is furthermore there's no way for you to store it onto the figure's body unlike well how they did it with duke where they have this small little hole on the tie there and there's a peg onto the pistol where you can plug it in and it, well you basically store the weapon onto the figure but there's no way for you to store the pulse pistol for onto the scarlet's body she can still wield it quite well especially on the right hand it's meant to be welded onto the right hand then we come along with the crossbow which is well two separate pieces itself as you can see there now the crossbow here is actually made of a black plastic material color with no paint job at all same goes with the pulse pistol there no paint job at all and the mold is basically the same as the resolute scarlet's well crossbow as you can see i have her next to me and they are both the same mold with no changes at all now despite that the details are nice you've got the scope on the top stock at the back handle at the bottom and the bow itself but nothing new with this weapon and for scarlet she has the wheel on her hand there's no way for you to actually store it onto the figure's body and that's about it that's all the accessories for scarlet here the renegade scarlet now despite that what it wrote at the back portion of the profile card for scarlet that she is a computer tech savvy in the animation as well for the renegades animation she also been shown a lot of times carrying a handheld well, computer device throughout the majority of the series itself why is it Hasbro do not give her that accessory as a matter of fact the main point of the major plot for the near end of the series itself spoiler alert that she carries a necklace with a picture of her dad now I don't want that kind of details of course but it would be nice to have well the smaller accessory of her removable or not with a necklace onto her neck it would be nice but two accessories is rather disappointing actually and they are not painted at all they're just pure black plastic material color now let's take a look at the figure's paint job now surprisingly enough of course for obviousness majority of the parts are not painted of course now the entire pair of arms there is made of a dark brown plastic material color the only paint job is on the fingers painted with the flesh tone skin now the torso is made of a beige or sort of like a really dull orange plastic material color but it's actually painted on the vest here with beige colors straps is also painted with a bluish gray paint job but also beige on this to the back portion of the this section here as well the neck here the collar here is painted in dark brown and the neck joint is also painted in a flesh tone paint job now the lower section of the torso here the waist itself is actually made of a I would say a really dull greenish plastic metal color the belt is painted in dark brown the belt buckle is painted in a very dull metallic paint job more towards like dark gray and the abdomen area is painted in dark brown the entire pair of legs here well at least the ties and the kneecap is actually not painted at all just pure plastic metal color the lower legs here this section is actually painted to match with the tie section and the bottom section of the legs itself the boots the entire boots is made of a I would say beige plastic metal color and the boots the bottom section of the boots is actually painted with dark brown more like a lighter colored dark brown of a paint job for the bottom section of the boots now surprisingly enough the entire head here is actually painted it's actually made of a dark brown plastic material color i was really surprised when i found about this 
So the face here, the flesh on skin is actually painted. The entire hand, including the ponytail, is also painted with a reddish, well, you know, redhead style paint job. The eyes is painted in green. The eyebrows is also painted with the same color as the hair itself and the lips is slightly pinkish. Very nice. I really like the paint job for the entire head there. The colors is actually not bad as you look at it. It looks very nice. It doesn't look very dull at all. Now for the figure's mold, entire body of this figure, Scarlet is made entirely of a nail body mold. Surprisingly enough. Everything you see on this figure's body is nail. I really love the head sculpt. The head sculpt is very gorgeous. Very nicely done. Though not entirely animation accurate because that would be quite impossible. But very nice. Especially I like the hair sculpt down. The face sculpt is also quite nicely done. Very nice. You got a little bit of dimple going on. Ponytail is at the back. And no matter what you do with it, it won't hinder the articulation with the ponytail at the back there very nice I really like the body mold itself with the padded armor the sleeves very nicely done bottom section of the legs as well a lot of the wrinkles of the bottom section of the boots and of course his her boots there's a lot of laces there as well Shoe laces, bottom section of the feet, nice little details there as well. Now, what's weird about this figure is that the tie section is rather long. I'm not too sure why they designed the tie that long. And if I want to compare it to the Resolute Scarlet, you can see the length of the tie itself. The knee joints were supposed to be at this location, but you can see how long the tie is, making her look kind of weird. And the lower section of the legs itself looks kind of short, making her look kind of freakish looking. Very interesting, but not too sure why they do that. Back portion of the mold itself is also quite nicely done with the details, back pockets. There's also, because she's wearing a very tight pants you can see a little bit of wrinkles on how tight the pants she's wearing right now very nice very nice details i really like the head sculpt very detailed indeed let's take a look at the figure's articulation the head itself is very nice you can go side to side go down a little bit go up she can look upwards and turn to a city grace with no problems with the ponytail at the back Shoulder joints here can turn 360 degrees and lift the shoulders all the way up this high. Elbow joint here can bend this far, back. No new articulation for the wrist joint, so it's just a simple swivel joint that turns 360 degrees. Also here can move forward, back, side to side, and turn 360 degrees. If you're asking if the ponytail is articulated or not no it's not articulated so don't dare don't you dare try to twist the ponytail you end up breaking it apart then the hip joints here can move forward back a little bit and to the sides double jointed knee that's bent all the way to the back here very nice now ankle joint here is really interesting rather have a simple hinge ball joint the ankle joint here it is a hinge joint of course, it can pivot downwards and upwards and rather able to turn 360 degrees, you can go side to side like so. So yes, there is no servo joint to turn the ankle 360 degrees. Well, saw the servo joint, you can actually turn it like so, 360 degrees. So you can pose this figure very nicely done, as you can see, you can twist the ankles sideways like so very nice now let's fully equip Scarlet with all the accessories considering there's only two accessories there the right hand is meant to equip with the pulse pistol because the amount of gap the right hand has and the left hand here as you can see the gap is rather close it's meant to place the crossbow 
like so. Now the problem with the crossbow itself, the bow tend to pop up quite easily. As you can see there, not really well done. There you go. Let's pose her a little bit. Very nice. Place her feet onto the pegs itself for the base time. Rather tight to place it in. Really tight. And there you have it. Scarlet, fully equipped with all the accessories. Now, for the figure itself, I really like the mode of the figure. The, everything on the figure's mode is all new. And I really like the articulation for the ankles itself. Making her posing, posing her is really, really interesting. Furthermore, the colors of the figure is really nice especially on the paint job for the head itself. What I really don't like is the overtly long ties. The ties are way too long. I'm not too sure why they do that. Second, that's only two accessories. It's rather disappointing. There's no handheld dis uh, computer device as shown in the G.I. Joe Renegades animation. There's no necklace. Just the pulse pistol and the crossbow, and that's about it. And the crossbow is nothing new e either. It's just the same old accessory that is shown in the Resolute, well, 7 pack there. So if I'm going to give a rating on this, the figure is actually not bad. It's actually really nice, but the ties is really weird looking. So if I'm going to give a rating on this, I'll give it a 7. Yes, a 7 out of 10 for the Renegade Scarlet. So I thank you all for watching, this is Lucy05 and I'm signing off.